Hi, I'm the Dutch birder, and one of my three lifetime goals in birding is to find a new species for the Netherlands. In 2021, I've identified the sole record of the hard to identify semi collared flycatcher in the Netherlands, but didn't find that bird myself. So that goal still stands. Chances of finding rare species increase when you're searching for the right species in the right period of the year. It is now summer and that means it's wader season and the Netherlands still lacks any record of for instance least sandpiper, short-billed dowitcher or Edsonian goldwits. So that are my target species for the day. In August, large numbers of common snipe can be seen in our wetlands and they are more visible than during other seasons. The problem is that the safest identification feature the number and shape of the tail feathers is only visible from a short range. But in Europe, always check for snipes with less saturated colors, with a less golden and more black and white appearance. Also check for uniformly barred underwings, which as a whole look a lot darker than a common snipe. If you see a bird that shows both features, then I would advise filming with a high shutter speed, or if your camera has a pre-record function, to use that to photograph the tail feathers when the bird takes off. And after identifying what species to search for during this period, it was time to choose an area to go birding. And I've chosen the Lauwersmeer, which is an hour drive from home, but is the best wader area in the Netherlands. Europe and the Americas share a lot of similar bird species, evolved from a shared ancestral species. For instance, in Europe we have common snipe, common ring plover, green sandpiper and spotted crake. In the Americas you have Wilson snipe, semi-palmated plover, solitary sandpiper and sora. And because those species look so much alike, it is hard to identify them in Europe. But they can be found, so it is up to us to find ways to easily identify them. When laying eyes on a green sandpiper, check if the wingtips reach beyond the tail. This is a good indication for solitary sandpiper. If this cannot be checked, also note the head pattern, with on green sandpiper a more notable eyebrow stripe, especially in front of the eye, and on solitary sandpiper a more notable eye ring instead of an eyebrow stripe. If you see a green sandpiper that shows features which point more towards solitary, then wait for the bird to take off and check if it has a white square rump or not. I then wanted to turn my car at the parking spot further along the road. Here I noticed some egrets between the cattle, so I started checking. Most were great white egrets, but then a smaller egret with a shorter neck flew up. I waited for it to land and it turned out to be a cattle egret. Here the size difference is misleading, as the cattle egret is clearly standing on something. I like to use my car as a height. I put a beanbag through the open window which gives a very stable platform for my scope. I can very quickly switch to my camera, much quicker than when using a tripod. And if you position the car right, you can keep checking despite some rain. Also, always check the ducks. Do you know what the bathing species behind the Eurasian coot is? Note the striped head pattern and the white throat. This is a gargony. Eurasian teal doesn't have this striking head pattern. blue winged teal does have a white patch behind the bill, but lacks the striped pattern. Finding rare birds isn't easy. You can do everything right and know all identification characters of every bird. Most of the time there is no rare bird present, so we have to invest a lot of time. As my wife and kids were eating up my parents-in-law, I took a salad with me so I had more time to search. Compared to when I had to wait for dinner time and cook at home first before going. While searching for rare birds, I spotted a great opportunity to get eye level with this very handsome black wing stilt. Unfortunately, I didn't know this was an electric fence. So when I got a bit too high, I got electrified. Luckily, no damage was done and I got the shots I was hoping for. Having learned my lesson, 
I went back in the car and noticed the group of rednecked fellow rope had moved in closer. I then moved on to the northern side of the area, where I was greeted by a flyby northern lapwing. While scoping the area, I noticed a couple of Caspian terns, which are always a sight to see. Another tern species that was present here was the juvenile black tern. If you ever see dusky flanks of one of these, then the alarm bell should ring, as you might have an American black tern on hand. Sadly, my search for a new species for the Netherlands was cut short due to my son being sick, so I decided to head home. On my way home, I noticed a bunch of buzzards and western marsh harriers sitting in a field fighting over a prey. A carrion crow tried to steal some scraps now and then. Of course, going out to specifically find a new species is doomed to fail. But if you try often enough, you are going to find something good someday. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it when that happens.